Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Bible Q&A. Today we're discussing, why did Jesus prevent the people from making him king? Jesus was one of the most righteous rulers humanity ever saw. He used his power to heal people. He used his authority to spread the gospel of peace. He protected his followers from their enemies, according to Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 12. However, he refused to actually declare himself a king. He avoided those who wanted to crown him in John chapter 6, verse 15. And when Pilate asked him to defend his kingship in John chapter 18, verse 34, he said that he didn't have a kingdom on earth to begin with. How could such a great ruler refuse to be called a royal? Well, Jesus knew that if he accepted the title of king, he'd also have to accept his subject's idea of a king, because kingdoms on earth are human creations. When the Israelites asked for a king in 1 Samuel chapter 8 verse 5, they weren't asking for a king who would serve God and promote his interests. They wanted a ruler like those of the nations around them. This was a spiritually reckless request, as kings who are set up by people rather than God will not lead properly. As it was said in Jeremiah, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 23. Samuel warned the Israelites in 1 Samuel chapter 8 verses 11 to 17 that kings would take their property and force them to work for him, but they ignored his advice. So Samuel had to crown Saul as Israel's first monarch. Saul was a very attractive king to the Israelites. He was tall, as shown by 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 23. He could whip up emotion, according to 1 Samuel chapter 11 verse 7. He was also a valiant warrior, as his successor David noted in 2 Samuel chapter 1 verses 22 to 23. However, because Saul was a king for the people rather than for God, his reign turned sour pretty quickly. He wanted to share the booty from the destruction of Amalek with his generals instead of with God, and soon after becoming the king, Saul cemented his rule and prevented anyone from replacing him. He wasn't interested in listening to God. He only cared about the admiration and respect of the Israelites. After Samuel criticized him for plundering the Amalekites, Saul told him, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and thy words, because I feared the people, and obeyed their voice. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 24 He worried that his soldiers and generals would get mad if they destroyed Amalek only to get nothing in return. Naturally, this terrible attitude would lead to his downfall. He became insane in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 14. The Philistines continued attacking Israel until they killed him and several of his family members in 1 Samuel chapter 31 verses 1 to 3. He left behind a divided nation. He could have solved these problems by returning to God, but he never did so, so his power weakened until he died. With Saul as an example of what not to do, Jesus began to build a different government. He filled his cabinet with commoners in John chapter 1 verses 35 to 50. He established his own rules and ignored the Pharisees' hypocritical laws in places like Matthew chapter 12 verses 1 to 3. He even washed his servants' feet in John chapter 13 verses 4 to 15. Every decision he'd make would be humble, focusing on the peasants rather than the nobles. With this strategy, he would be able to rule an empire that dictators could only dream of. Millions submit to his authority today not because he forced them to or won favor from local leaders, but because they like what he said. They serve him willingly because they know he will stick up for them when the time comes. The reason he was able to do all this was that he wasn't limited by the responsibilities of kingship. He didn't have to please any sinful human beings, as he was answerable only to his father, God Almighty. As it was said in John, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. John chapter 5 verse 30. He could literally do any righteous thing he wanted, because his opponents couldn't even kill him. Having mastered the art of staying modest and avoiding the trappings of power, Jesus can now teach others to do the same, in places like Matthew chapter 23 verses 10 to 11. 
For example, in Luke chapter 9 verse 23 and chapter 18 verse 22, he told potential disciples to abandon their possessions and therefore all their influence in the world to join him. He did this because he knew that wealth made a lot of people really arrogant. Therefore, my advice is that we should follow Jesus' lead. We shouldn't fight to become the most influential people in our offices, schools, or families. Such fighting has nothing to do with God, and it only bolsters our egos. Instead, we should focus on the simple things in life, maintaining strong families, improving our knowledge of God. Things like these will please our Heavenly Father, who is one of the few individuals with actual power in the universe. And that is where I'm going to stop with this Bible Q&A. Why did Jesus prevent the people from making him king? He did this because to be an earthly king, you have to listen to your earthly subjects. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe.